G'day legends. Looking like a typical grease monkey today. I'm actually doing my hard yards. I'm back into the work. Uh, good reason why I am so covered in grease and uh, grime and grot at the moment. It's because we're actually doing our bearings on the caravan. So I've done three of them so far and I thought, bugger it, I'm going to film the last one and just go through some real basic sort of um, tips and tricks of maybe what to do and what not to do if you're looking at doing something like this for yourself. Because for us, at the moment, we went to try and get a service done on the caravan and got told that the bearings were pretty much on their way out and probably need to be replaced at some stage. So uh, that was about two days ago and since then, we pulled one of the tires off just to check the bearings and get the numbers. Uh, we've been into town, we've got all new bearings, uh, inners and outers, and we've come back and we're basically going to do it ourselves. Uh, two reasons for that is, uh, well, for one, it's for, for our knowledge and learning going forward because we actually haven't done it before. Um, haven't even done it like in previous years. So again, it's another skill to learn. Um, very much a very important one too. If something was to go wrong and you're stuck on the side of the road uh, in the middle of actually nowhere, uh, it's a very good uh, skill to have because you can just rip that off, put a couple of new bearings in there, put the wheel back on and away you go. Because if you're driving with uh, busted bearings and that, things can get pretty wild pretty quick. Uh, the other side of it too was because we couldn't get it in anywhere. Um, we were lucky, maybe even get it in within the week, but that was on a cancellation list. Um, most places were booked out until the end of May, so there's probably a good well, two months from today's date uh, that they're booked out. So for something where we were about to punch back to Queensland, so we got a, probably a good 2,000 odd kilometres to drive, um, and to be told that the bearings are on their way out and we can't get in anywhere for probably at least a month or more It was like well, what else do we do? Do we just do it ourselves? It can't be that hard where we're staying these friends have come over just to give us a, a quick overview uh, a few tips and tricks what I'm going to show you now and Basically just yeah show you the ins and outs of it because at the end of the day if you can put your head around this It's pretty simple. It could get you out of strife pretty bloody quick so enough rambling I'm going to rip this tire off. We're going to go into my little workshop that we've got here with our friends. And uh, yeah, we'll run through a few tips and tricks for you. So I've already got the jack underneath and I've uh, just taken some of the weight of that wheel. Uh, first of all, I'm going to knock the nuts off. I'm using my trusty impact wrench. This thing comes in handy with everything I do on the road. It's more, probably my number one tool if I was going to recommend it. I'll put the uh, details in the description below if you want to check it out. Yeah, I'll rip that wheel off in the nuts and uh, I'll show you how to take that whole brake drum off. So as you can see the jacks underneath, I've just raised this independent suspension um, underneath here. A good indicator too, or good thing to know is uh, don't have your handbrake on. You'll know if it is because it'll it'll be sort of fully locked and you won't be able to move it, but our handbrake's off at the moment. So inside of the brake drum, if you're not too aware of it, there's uh, sort of pads on either side. And when the brake is on, they expand out, which locks this. So you won't be able to move it if it's on, but if it's off, you can spin it, and it's much easier to take that off once you take all your nuts and stuff off. So grab yourself a flat edge screwdriver or a chisel or something very similar. You want to get in behind the back here. Sometimes you might even have to just give it a tap with a hammer. So I've got that in there now and it's just starting to come apart. So just give it a little bit of a wiggle right the way around. And that should pop off like that. So that's your cap that basically stops all the crap getting inside. In underneath that, you've got yourself a split pin, and then you've got the nut, and then a washer. So I'll take it all off one by one and show you exactly what I mean. And uh, once all that guts come out, you can take this whole piece off. So the thing with these nuts is they're not going to be super, super tight where you're going to have to put a spanner on them. If you do, you know that it's been put on probably the incorrect way because when you put these on, they should be only finger tight. 
So you can see I can just crack that with my finger. So that means that we're, we've got one success so far, which is nice. And in behind that nut is a big washer. Take him out. So I'll keep them all together in the cup and I'll take that in and I'll give them all a bit of a clean uh, once I take this inside as well. So all that's left to do is to uh, pull this off. And just like that, that's your whole brake, drum brake come off. So we'll take this inside of the little workshop and uh, we'll rip into all the bearings and show you how it's all done. Like the easiest thing you can get is something like this, like we've just got some little bits of timber, just two little pieces, just so you can keep this raised and off the ground. It just makes it a hell of a lot easier to work with. It's nice height. Um, and you can actually bash these bearings out and we can catch them on the bottom here with another rag. No, no. Yeah, that's right. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to take, there's an inner bearing and an outer bearing. So the inner bearing is the one closest to the chassis, which is the biggest one. And you've got an outer bearing, which is the little one that I took out just before I took the rim out. So they're the smaller one. So it's a, a quick indicator to know which is inner and outer. Um, so basically we're just going to pop them out. We're going to clean it all up and then we'll start putting the new ones in and then we'll re-grease it give it a bit of a clean and whatnot, and then throw it straight back on. It's like literally that simple, but- Exactly what Jack said. Yeah, he's, he's a good imitator, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Be self like a bit of a, either a hole punch or, I don't know, it's something where you t it's long and you can, you can hit it, uh, preferably with something with a flat edge, because you want to be able to get in through the holes and then knock out the bearings from the other side. So I'm just going to tap out the front one So I've just knocked out the first small cone, which is where the small bearing or the outer bearing goes into. So I'll flip that over now. So I can get to the back ones. Same thing again, using your punch and your hammer. Look at that, straight away. So basically, right there is the pieces you've seen on top. There's your big bearing or your inner bearing. And then you've got uh, the front one there as well, the cone. So we kicked it over there. So we've still got the, the cone to get out of that inner one. This one can be sometimes tricky because it's so far in and it's just the very smallest lip. But just take your time because you'll always get it. <laughs> right -o. so as you can see, all the collars are out, all the cones are out and the bearings are out. So basically we've left with a naked shell with nothing in it except for grease. We're no bloody experts, we've only just learnt, so if this is something different to something that you've done plenty of times and you do your own way, then so be it. But We're not mechanics. We're definitely not mechanics, but as far as we know, this is what, uh, this is what we've been told and what works. So yeah, hold your judgments till the end. <laughs> By the way too, if you can get some industrial paper towel, this stuff is absolute gold. Like you're gonna go through a fair bit of it because you're playing with heaps and heaps of grease and to uh, assure that you can do what you want to do and not get it everywhere, you're gonna need rags and lots of them. All right, so you can see there's a lot of dust. There's a bit of grime and grit and everything else in there. So basically what we're gonna do is we've got some brake cleaner here in a bottle, spray bottle. I'm just gonna give that a really good uh, coating. Most of that crap will fall off. And I'll just give it a quick hose, which will leave it nice and, which will leave it nice and clean. And then we've got a, a brand new sort of, I guess, brake drum to put the whole housing back on and we're good to go again after that. Um, just also too, this one here, there's another little rubber seal. So these are marine grade seals. So it means that you're not going to get all that water and gunk and mud and, you know, river crossings and stuff uh, inside there and uh, chewing out your bearings. So if yours has got this, you should, uh, should be pretty good with that. 
um, anything less. I don't know. I don't know how they go, but for what I think, marine, I think they're going to be well and truly waterproof. So it's good to know that the van comes with those standard, which is really, really handy. Righto, so we brought back the housing. It's all clean now. I've just dried it up with a uh, couple more of these industrial tea towels, and they're going to be your best mate. Um, I'll touch on the packing of these two a little bit after this because I've found that a lot of people hate doing them manually and they just hate doing them in general. But we've been lucky enough to be given this tool that uh, basically packs them within seconds. And it is a portable bearing packer. I'll tell you what, this thing is gonna be your best friend, especially if you're doing a lot of them like we have today. Um, it's definitely gonna be a lifesaver. This is one that we've packed earlier. What we did was we went through and packed all of them. So we bought five of these. So four for the van and a spare one to take with us. So we packed five of them so we can keep this in the van somewhere as a spare part. It's all greased up, ready to go. So if we hit any dramas or any issues on the road, um, there's a small one there too. So you got the inner and outer. So if we run into any issues on the road or we, um, we blow a bearing or something crazy goes on, we just pull these out and uh, throw them in like we are right this second. So, right oh, we're gonna start with the inner, which is the big one. So, to each bearing, you've got the actual bearing, or bearings in that piece, and then you've got this outer piece, which they call the cone. So basically, this has to go in first, and you gotta make sure that it concaves in. So you got, as you can tell here, See how they got a bit of a, a, a rounded edge. One, one side's tighter than the other. So you basically want it to be able to sit in like so. So make sure that the, uh, the smaller circle's in as you put it in. Another good one is the uh, rubber mallet or a, a plastic hammer like this. Especially with all these edges and whatnot, you don't want to damage them too much. Uh, what I've been doing today is I've just sat that on top and I've got my plastic hammer. I'm just gonna tap that until I can't tap it anymore. And then I'm gonna get out my little hammer piece and I'll make sure that goes all the way down to the bottom. So I've put that cone in on the outer, the small one, but I'm not gonna put that bearing in just yet. And there's a reason for that, is because when I go to put this on, the first thing is, well, nine times out of 10, the first thing that's gonna happen is you're gonna knock that out. And it's gonna land on the ground, you're gonna pick up stones, dirt, all sorts of stuff, and you're gonna put it back in there. Um, it's best, I've well, found now, doing three of them now, is just to keep it in this little glare wrap that we've got. Just wrap it up. Nice, neat little parcel. And I'll put that on here and I'll take that out with me. Basically, before this goes on, last thing is to pack this full of grease. So there's a big cavity inside there. So you wanna pack that so tight that there's basically no air inside. So you wanna have enough grease that when that shaft goes through, there's nothing but grease touching it. So there's quite a big cavity in there that needs to be filled. So you will need a bit of grease to pack it in. But uh, other than that, once that's done, We'll take it outside, we'll take our little outer bearing with us, and we'll throw it on and repeat the process. I feel like I'm back at work. <laughs> <laughs> Hence the reason why Sean's doing this part. If anything, I probably should be doing this part. <laughs> <laughs> but you know it better than I do. <laughs> I'm well practiced. Nursing skills coming into play here. Yeah, don't go dirty. We're talking about nursing. Yes. Yeah, that's looking good. It's a nice packed blue hole. <laughs> well lubricated. Fantastic.
Righto, next one. Marine seal on the back. So you got this big collar at the back here. Takes a little bit to get on, but uh, it's, a, it's a firm seal. I like to let it sit just forward of where it needs to be. So by the time you push that on and clicked it in, um, it's pushing up nice and hard on that. I got my bearing, got my nut washer and cut cover. So all that's left now is to put the whole piece on. So you know how I said don't put that bearing in just yet because by the time I put that on and the shaft pops out, yeah. nine times out of ten it's gonna fall out. What's gonna happen when you put it in the hole? The shaft's gonna pop out. The shaft's gonna pop out. Bearing out. Why came in? Wash her on. Put your nut on. For anyone playing at home. Can you tell me what that nut's called? The design of it will give it probably away to most, but I'll let you know at the end if you got it wrong. So this is probably one of the most important parts about wheel bearings and putting these Mom. things on properly. You know how I talked about the last one being finger tight, I should be able to crack that with my fingers and take it off. That's the key part about putting it back on. So what I've been showing is tighten it as far as you can with your fingers. It's pretty tight there now. Give it a bit of a spin. Bed that grease right into the, into the gaps and then knock it back Go forward, knock it back, go forward, repeat. Sometimes you'll get a little bit more on it, sometimes you won't. But the key is, as long as you've done that, you know you've bedded as far as you can. But there is a little hole there for the split pin to go through. And for this nut here, it's got these grooves in it, is where the split pin will have to sit. So the key is to try and get as far around as possible, but not all the time it'll line up with the hole. As long as you've done a bit of bedding and making sure that grease is right up in there, and you know that that's, that is absolute max, at the moment it's not lining up. I've got one of these teeth in front of it. So all I'm gonna have to do is just knock it back until it's in line. It might feel strange and weird for it to be that little bit looser, but that's how it is. It's <laughs> To me it was like, ugh, one of them felt really iffy. The other one's lined up pretty well. There's a couple, there's two now like this, but it is what it is, and it's just how it is and what it's gonna be like. But uh, now that we've done that, I'm gonna put the split pin in, and then we put our cap on top, put the tire back on, and then we're good to go. So this is probably gonna be a little boring part, so we might time lapse this half of it. But just FYI, I do do the star formation to make sure that you've got that wheel on there perfect before you go around and tighten everything else up and then you know get the torque wrench onto it as well if you do say one two three okay. you've tightened one half the wheel which the other half might not be on properly as you come around which can cause some serious serious problems so star formation is basically one side opposite side another side opposite side bang bang so you want to do opposites like this so it's it's going from one side to the next, 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 and then go around and tie them all up. basically all I'm doing here is I've got the jack underneath 
just taking the weight so I can spin the tire. And I'm basically just grabbing each side and just giving it a bit of a wiggle. Because a good indicator sometimes if the bearing's not in properly or you've done something wrong, um, that'll move a, f a fair bit. So the fact that it's nice and solid, there's no movement, there's no nothing going on, means that we're Mickey Mouse Mint, mate. We're good to go. So yeah, what we're going to do now is we're going to drop this down, we'll pack up a few tools and uh, bits and pieces. We might hook the car up and we'll go for a bit of a spin. We'll go down the road, we'll go and do a few kilometres, see if we can get some uh, heat up into these tyres and just pull over and start checking these sensors. The only big reason I haven't put those centre caps on yet is so I can get in there and really feel these and just see how they're going because another reason why you do that um, is basically if something inside is not doing what it's meant to be doing it's going to get really hot which means the bearings aren't doing what they're meant to be doing um, you've got some issues and you need to pull that tire off and check it and see what the hell's going on so yeah just another hot tip too if you are touring and you're doing a lot of touring it's always good to get your hands in here after a, like a big trip whether you've done two three four hour drive or even if it's just a half hour drive it's always good just to go around and check each one individually just Stick your fingers on top of the, uh, the the brakes there. If you've got no covers like this, you can stick your hand right in there and just feel if it's, if it's hot. If it is hot, you know you've got a drama. If they're nice and cool, uh, you know they're working perfectly. So it's a really quick, simple way to see if anything's playing up and you can get on top of it really, really quickly. Oh, so we packed the kids up and we're on the road. This is our first time on our new bearings that you put in. Yep. Fingers crossed they're all good. So we're just getting onto the highway. It's like 110 and I had to pull on, so I've had to like gun it to get on there. <laughs> yeah, um, we decided we're going to go get some dinner in town while we're there and just feel the bearings, make sure they're not hot when we arrive. Um, and yeah, done. Hopefully done your wheel it. doesn't fall off. <laughs> oh, don't say that. No. This is where you really get to test your big... Hey! Yeah, we're going to get you some nuggets and chippies. He wants nuggets and chippies. Um, but this is where you really get to test your like mechanical ability in a sense. And it's like, did I do it right? Yeah. Like the reason it's our car pretty... is on the road right now is because you... The caravan, yeah. Oh, the caravan is on the road right now is because you changed everything within the wheel. Well, that's what we were saying before. Like, it, you're literally the whole running gear of anything rolling is the bearings. Mm. And they're tiny little bits of steel and metal, and that's just. It's crazy it, that it, they're it, there and it, that does that. Mind blowing, really, isn't it? But anyway, we'll tune in when we get there. We'll check them and just give them a feel, make sure all's good. And then, apart from that, I'll talk more when we get there. <laughs> Well, so far so good they're a little warm but they're not hot so we'll probably do another drive on the way back uh, we we'll just come down to KFC for a, a quick feed for dinner and then we'll go back and then we'll check them again so they'll have a, a good amount of time to sort of get some revolutions in them and a bit of heat so so far so good hey guys so a quick real-time update for you so I'm actually editing the episode you've just watched I just wanted to fill you in and let you know that we're back to just Thursday nights now going forward. Uh, we're actually currently in Queensland. We're at my sister's house. This is her lovely office, my vlog background. And um, we're going to be doing some exploring around the Brisbane area. So there's one more episode when we pass through Dubbo and then we're going to be live in Queensland. So if you're following along and you're keeping up with all the extra episodes, you're pretty much real time with us now. We're really looking forward to showing you Southeast Queensland and some of our favorite bits around here. And as well, not long now, that new van is coming. So it'll all be happening real time. Thanks again for tuning in this week. Sorry it wasn't your typical uh, holiday episode. However, I hope you learned something from this and we'll see you next week at Dubbo. Check for the reason we left the book. It's recording. Yeah. So what are we, what's going on, Jack? What are we doing? Uh, it's so bad. It's so bad? Yeah. So what are we going to do? My bike. Do you need to fix it? Yeah. Really? My big one. We're gonna fix in here. You're gonna take that all apart. You're gonna take and do it with your, your paintbrush. Yeah. <laughs>
Oh, I don't know how far you're gonna get with that. What is it? What did you find, your bug? 